Hello, I'm Bayeru Agabib. As we face the new society driven by data and information, Cyber Africa provides you a trusted platform. Here we understand how telecoms, the internet, and the media are redefining our world. By now, Nigeria should have been at least, I mean, consuming its own petrol that has been refined in this country. From music to tourism, politics to business, and education to governance. We see people running up and down for life. They are serving themselves 100% with, with, with their strength. The Nigerian Communications Act 2003 to pleasure by fully by the provisions of this law. That's why Saba Africa trusts you to trust us as we bring you the initiatives, the issues, the actors, and the role of ICT in Africa's development. For details, log on to www.aitinfotechnetwork.com or email bayeragabi at aitinfotechnetwork.com or better still, reach AIT Head Marketing, Lagos or Abuja. Cyber Africa, connecting Africa with the new age at this time. In what appears a cry for help, the regulator of the Nigerian telecoms industry, NCC, has appealed to the legal state government to support its efforts at nipping the prevalent poor quality of telecom service in the board. The reason for the appeal is not far-fetched, as Lagos plays a critical role in the country's telecom sector. About four undersea fiber optic cables carrying huge terabytes of data are lying at the shores of the state from where they are transported to users across the country. Also noteworthy is the fact that Lagos commands more than 15% of the active mobile subscribers in Nigeria. Telecommunications can only be better with more infrastructure. For example, in the UK, there are more than 65,000 base stations for telecommunication services in a lot that is far less than Nigeria's. Nigeria is yet to achieve 25,000 installations across its huge landmarks. Yet many people that we have already have a map and are facing the environment. During a courtesy visit to the governor of Lagos State, Babatunde Raji Fashala, the executive vice chairman of the NCC, Dr. Eugene Jua, craved his support to end some of the impediments to good telecom service quality. From multiple taxation to vandalization of telecoms infrastructure, Jua, like a mother hen, protects his cheek, seeks protection for the industry he oversees. Your Excellency, this situation is made worse by multiple taxations and regulations that have weighed the service providers at various levels of government, including state governments, local governments, and even some communities. Fashala, on his part, is not ignorant of the economic impact of a connected society. I understand the import of telecommunications and data, so we are switching to the combat. But there are multi jurisdictional issues. And the federal government and its agencies must understand, and I repeat this, that the prosperity of this federation will start from and the prosperity of the state will start with the prosperity of the rural countries. He, however, differ with Jua on some of the ways of tackling the prevalent challenges. Whether we like it or we do not, or we do not, telecommunications and your regulatory rule is a multi jurisdictional response. That is the honest truth. Um, you will regulate the application of frequencies. You will regulate bandwidth and so many other things. But you cannot regulate where towers and mass are put. You need me, as indeed you need all of my colleagues, to determine where the right of way will be and under what conditions. Like they say, a man is as good as his word. It is hoped that this meeting will bring about the necessary collaboration that the two must have to overcome some, if not all, of the issues highlighted here today. 
And from there we go to South Africa where the people have come out to identify their own who are making ways in the global scene. EFKinsider.com titles the report Celebrities You Didn't Realize Were From South Africa. And it begins with the author of Lord of the Ring, John Ronald Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, as it's fondly called, is said to be from Free State Province and lived there until he moved to England at age three, after his father's death. Best known for authoring the Lord of the Rings series written between 1937 and 1949, Tolkien also addressed societal issues in other works, expressing his opposition for Stalinism, socialism and his disgust of racism. Talisa Theron is one of the few people on this list who actually grew up in South Africa. Her first language is said to be Afrikaans. Only in the then Transvaal province, she grew up on her parents' farm outside Johannesburg. At 13, she sent to boarding school and began studying at the National School of the Arts in Johannesburg until she moved to Los Angeles at 19 to join the movie business. It goes on and on. To mention about 10 of them, you can check out others on afkinsider.com and about 50 comments followed these reports. That is a show for the week and thanks for being with us. Please log on to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV for more reports from across Africa. And now back to Kakaki Studio. <laughs> How you?